Welcome back guys, this is CIT225 and uh, uh, the name of the course is Network Security and Penetration Testing. We are trying to understand different aspects of network security and penetration uh, testing and uh, the book that we are using for this is uh, um, Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. Um, we understood what is RAID in our last lecture and uh, um, what are the different tools that are used to acquire the data from the RAID supported disks. Uh, um, that's the main uh, motive of uh, today's lecture. Now, as we can understand that um, there are RAID disks being used on the servers and uh, um, there are lots of reasons which has been covered in the previous lecture. Now we'll try to understand that um, what are different tools available out there in order to um, investigate and in order to um, recover the data from the hard drives. Um, lots of new tools are released every year. Um, it's not limited to the tools which are mentioned over here. Um, you can use any tools available out there. The main idea of discussing some of the softwares which are available out there is uh, some of them are free, some are very professional and uh, we'll be talking about the features which are included in these softwares. So in case if you are part of any investigation team or you are conducting a forensics and in, uh, investigation, uh, you must have at least these features available in your preferred softwares. Um, and then you'll be able to conduct the analysis in a professional way. Now, first of all, using remote network acquisition tools, the feature which is available by uh, these network acquisition tools is that they can provide you a access a stealth mode access to the suspect's computer now there are lots of reasons why we want to do that first of all we don't want to inform the suspect that we are conducting an investigation on their uh, machines or any specific server uh, we want to conduct the analysis in a way that the data is not being altered or if the person in ca some cases if he's aware of any investigation taking place he might try to delete the data or the tools or any other uh, softwares which were being installed on those machines. So most of the acquisitions have to be done as live acquisitions, not static acquisitions. When performing the uh, remote acquisitions, advanced privileges are required in order to push the agent application uh, to the remote server. Now there are lots of tools for that. Um, if we are talking about uh, um, our software, which is ProDiscover, there is a uh, ProDiscover server, which helps us in those things. Further, we'll have to um, update the policies on our antivirus uh, solution software because sometimes um, they treat these kind of investigations as uh, um, a virus or a malware which is being connected to the computer. Now, there are some drawbacks of uh, pushing the network acquisition tools is, as I told you, that antivirus or anti-spyware software or the firewall which is installed on the computer would indicate it as someone is trying to penetrate in the computer. Uh, thus, before pushing these kind of tools to the computers, um, you must uh, uh, update the policies on your antivirus, anti-spamware and the firewall. Uh, to allow the uh, allow pushing these kind of files towards the suspect computers um, since these tools uh, have some advanced privileges and uh, um, it's required to access those computers remotely so um, if firewall or antivirus is installed on those computers and it's not being properly configured uh, you won't be able to conduct the analysis uh, further, if, uh, for example, if the antivirus solution software did not detect it or the firewall is not detecting it later, if it at some times it's detecting anything like that, it would slow down the process, rather it would even uh, disable the access directly um, of the remote uh, ProDiscover server to the uh, suspect computers. Um, suspect could easily install their own security tools um, as well on the computers, uh, which can trigger an alarm or can notify them that an investigation is taking place. Um, that's why we need to install the softwares in a um, stealth mode so that they are not detected by any of these softwares or by any of the uh, remote tools which uh, the suspect might have installed on the computers. 
um, uh, but not to mention over the over here is that we must not allow any admin privileges to uh, any individuals who are using these uh, computers remote computers or servers um, the permission shall be uh, with the network security team or the um, help desk uh, personals who are authorized to install any kind of applications on these computers now if we are talking about the uh, uh, features which are available in ProDiscover, first of all it captures the volatile system state information. Um, initial investigative report uh, in which condition the server it the basic information about uh, the suspect machine. Analyze the current running processes which are there. Now that's important because uh, it would detect if there are any softwares installed on the machine which might trigger an alarm to the suspect informing that an investigation is in progress. Further, it would locate any unseen files and processes which are running on the remote computers. Remotely, you can view and listen to the um, different ports which are open on the computer and you can run the hash uh, comparisons as well. Now, we have discussed about hash comparison quite in detail in chapter number one. Um, then create a hash inventory of all the files uh, remotely. So in all these processes, you don't need to even go to the computer. You can conduct all these uh, investigation analysis remotely. You can remotely connect to a suspect computer via network acquisition and copy the data from it and remotely tools uh, vary in, um, in their uh, different uh, configuration and capabilities. Now the features which are there in uh, ProDiscover server agent are that uh, ProDiscover utility um, helps us in remotely accessing the computers then it needs to be loaded on the suspect computer either by pushing it from the remote server or you can um, install a uh, policy or you can configure a policy and can push the files from the active directory. Now ProDiscover server installation modes um, can be done uh, by using a CD or a trusted CD or um, it could be a part of the image when you are deploying it in the computers or pushing out uh, to the computers uh, running remotely. Um, what I would say is that if you have a, um, a well uh, defined uh, or an uh, license a proper license of a pro discover server um, the best way is to uh, um, conduct the installation via the image when all these critical computers are being configured uh, you can configure or image them while having the um, the tools or the plugins of pro discover uh, server installed on all those machines so that in case of any investigation or whenever you need to conduct any kind of investigation on those remote machines, uh, you don't need to worry about uh, pushing these kind of uh, uh, tools towards the remote computer. Secondly, if you're doing anything like that, you might have configured the antivirus and the firewall policies accordingly and might have tested it before they go into the production process. And now Pro Discover Server can run in the stealth mode. It can change process names to appear as operating system functions so that um, the even if the suspect, if he's using the same computer, he won't be able to detect that if it's uh, something running from Pro Discover or if it's a Windows um, known uh, internal process. If we are talking about the security features which are there in Pro Discover, uh, you can have it password protected so once it's running once it's running on the suspect computer he won't be able to kill the process uh, since once uh, if he'll discover it uh, somehow and will try to kill the process it would ask for a password um, further it works in uh, in an encrypted mode it can secure the communication and uh, uh, protocols with the server um, it can write protect uh, trusted binaries on the uh, server itself so that they cannot be modified and and the digital signatures will be there which would uh, verify that um, the content and the tools which were used on the server has not been compromised in any way. Now the other tool which is available out there which is quite famous as well um, is NCase Enterprise. Now that's another famous one which is being used in professional um, investigation and analysis. A remote acquisition features search and collect the internal and external network systems over a wide geographical area. 
Now, if your computers are spreaded in different parts of the country and you have remote locations, you can th use this software with the help of which if you're using, if you're sitting in the head office, you are still able to collect the uh, forensics uh, uh, data from the remote computers. It supports multiple operating systems and files and uh, they tries to help determine the system's relevance to an investigation, whether it can easily conduct an investigation on the remote operating system and the kind of uh, update patches and everything which is installed on those remote machines uh, further it can perform simultaneous searches or up to uh, to five systems at a time uh, that it um, suppose if it was a huge data breach in in an organization you need to investigate more than one system uh, so it helps you in investigating and collecting the data from different machines across the geographical area and uh, conduct the analysis on it next one which is in the list is remote acquisition tool with R tools or we call it R studio R tool suites of software is designed for data recovery it can remotely access the network computers um, it creates a raw format acquisitions uh, uh, with the help of which you can later easily investigate it and it also supports various file systems uh, now the next one is remote acquisition with Whetstone US Lat Pro. Um, Pro. Uh, now US Lat Pro is uh, a part of a suite of the tools uh, developed by Whetstone. It can connect to network computers remotely to perform live acquisition of all the drives which are connected to it. So it's not uh, only limited to the RAID controllers or um, the um, hard drives which are physically uh, connected to the computer, but it can conduct analysis on um, on different uh, uh, logical drives as well which are connected to the computer. Next tool in the list is called FResponse. FResponse is a vendor neutral uh, remote access utility with the help of which you can conduct the analysis designed to work with any digital forensics program. Um, it can set up security read only connections since uh, we discussed it earlier that um, our main focus is that we don't want to alter the data in a way uh, that later it would be a problem or where you cannot, uh, you're not confident that the data which is being acquired from the suspect computer is in the original format. Now there are four different versions of F response, which are enterprise edition, consultant edition, um, convert edition, and uh, the tactical edition, uh, which performs or have the different options uh, depending the kind of scenario you are in. Other tools which are there for acquisition are Passmark software, uh, which helps us in creating a image USB. And uh, then we have um, ASR Data Smart. We can also use runtime software uh, like iLook, uh, IX Investigate, and IX Imager. Or there are lots of other tools which are open source and are available on Source SourceForge. Now, Passmark software, um, which is uh, imaging for the USB, and Passmark software has acquisition called. Uh, the image USB for its forensics analysis product. To create a bootable flash drive, you need at least Windows XP computer. Uh, you load the software with it and then you will create a bootable USB which you can use on the uh, suspect computers or the remote computers which have been invest uh, which has been infected by um, any kind of penetrations or if you have any doubts that the machines has been compromised. Um, now there is another ASR Data Smart, um, a Linux forensics analysis tool that uh, um, can make image files of the suspect drive and can produce proprietary or raw format of the images depending what kind of data and what kind of investigation you want to conduct on those. Uh, the capabilities of this software is that it can read um, the data even from the bad sectors or the data which is not easily uh, recognized by most of the uh, commercial uh, uh, data retrieval and uh, recovery softwares. Uh, it can mount the drives in a uh, right protected mode that you can view the contents inside the drives. It can mount uh, the target drives in a read write mode, depends if uh, um, there was an empty drive or if you want to write something on it, you want to copy certain softwares and stuff like that, it would allow it. But all depends on the settings or the kind of investigation you are conducting on those machines. Um, it can even compress the uh, data um, as per the schemes uh, to top speed acquisition or reduce the amount of the storage which is needed by uh, 
the software now there are some runtime software also available it offers shareware programs and data acquisition and recovery like Dix, discuss uh, explorer or uh, for fat or ntfs uh, investigation it can create a raw format image of the hard drive and it can segment the raw format of compressed image and archive purposes and it can even access the network computer drives uh, without having any problems now next is iLook investigator or IEX imager we call it it runs uh, from a bootable floppy disk or a CD for that you need a physical access to the suspects computer now next is iLook investigator or IEX imager IX Imager runs uh, from a bootable uh, floppy disk or a CD and it's designed to work only with um, iLook uh, IX and inquire the uh, single drive or the RAID drive images and it can even support the IDE, PETA, uh, set as SCSI, USB or FireWire connections associated with the computers. And on SourceForge, uh, there are several applications available for analysis and investigation. Um, every day there is a new software or a, um, an update for the existing softwares. Uh, so whenever you are conducting an investigation, it's always a good idea to look for the latest softwares and read the reviews about uh, uh, the softwares or the tools that you can use in order to acquire the data. Uh, that's it as far as chapter 3 is concerned. We'll uh, see what we are going to cover in our next chapter. Thank you very much.